Okay, so let's start with our first example, height block cipher. Height is a lightweight block cipher designed by Hong et al. in 2006. I think it was in CHESS 2006 conference. It is shown to be highly convenient for extremely constrained devices like RFID tags and sensor networks. It became a standard encryption algorithm in South Korea. Also IOSA IEC standard for block ciphers but they couldn't become an IOSA standard for lightweight block ciphers because during that time, I found some 31 run related key attacks which actually prevented them to become a standard. It is a generalized unbalanced phase time network. Block size is 64 bits, key size 128 bits, run number is 32. We talk about phase time network when we talk about this, but now I'm saying generalized unbalanced, so let's see what this means in the picture. But before moving on to the picture, here is a table from the original paper when they propose height. Here they are trying to show that uh, they require less area than AES, but their throughput is better. So this is why they are proposing that their uh, cipher is as secure as AES, but faster than that and requires less foot hardware footprint. But again, comparing these results using different technologies is not easy. So this comparison might not be fair. But also saying that AS requires more than 3000 gate equivalents is not always correct because, you know, at some point, some people uh, obtained uh, smaller implementations of AES. Similarly, other people obtained smaller gate equivalents for heights. But again, it depends on the technology, the device, and so on. But also in one of the published papers, Rin et al. showed that height is faster than AES, SL, C, T, and XT on 8-bit microcontrollers because the operations on height are really simple, so it is expected. So their idea is as follows. From the master key, they have a key schedule algorithm, but just focusing on the master key bytes, they provide bytes called sub keys. These are whitening keys and these are sub keys. So from the master key, they produce a lot of uh, sub keys and they perform 32 rounds of encryption. We actually looked at the uh, key schedule algorithm. Key schedule just, you know, uh, changes the position of bytes and maybe exhorts and so on. But what we observe is that if you know the, this is the original key, 16 bytes, so if you know the zero byte of the master key, this means that you also know the whitening key of four and the sub keys bytes 0, 17, 34, and so on. This is important because in cryptanalysis, you need to know once you, because you are going to attack sub keys, but you should also know which master key they come from and so on. So this kind of table allows the attacker to break. So this is why we actually found better attacks than the previous attacks, okay? The cipher is really simple. So I called it generalized unbalanced. I mean generalized because instead of two lines here, like in the case of this, we have eight lines. So it is generalized. Unbalanced means that, you know, here, uh, I think it is focusing on the swap part. You have uh, 64 bits here, but swap operation is not symmetric, you're just taking these eight bits to here and moving uh, 56 bits to the left part. This is why they call unbalanced, but it is not that important. ID is simple. Your, your plain text is 64 bits. So here every line represents a single byte, okay? So you can see you're actually applying many different phase style uh, process. So here the right byte becomes the left byte, but it also goes to a function called F0. Then it is added to the sub key byte. But as you can see, this is an XOR operation. This is addition operation. So this is addition modulo two to the eight, okay? Then you XOR with the left part and so on. So as you can see, the picture is really simple. And you might think that, so what are F0s and F1s? You might think that there are many operations inside it, but the definition is really simple. 
So you take this byte in our scenario, let's say it is X. You rotate it one bit to the left. You rotate it two bit to the left, seven bits to the left and XOR them. So you're actually shuffling this byte then at the sub key, then XOR it with the left part. So you might think that where the security comes from because this rotation and XOR operations are linear operations. Uh, the only non-linear part comes from this modular addition parts. Sometimes the modular addition is here, not at the key addition, but sometimes it is in the here. So XOR and modular addition sometimes swap in the picture. So as you can see, this is a very simple design. This is why it is very fast. Uh, so it is no surprise that this is faster than many designs and require less area. But here the problem is that since you have many lanes here, for instance, if you make a change only to this byte, so it doesn't affect anything in the first round of encryption. So this change comes here, right? In the following round, this change bytes comes here, but it also affects here and changes here. So making a simple change in the input affects only two bytes in two runs. In three runs, it affects three bytes and then four bytes and so on. So making a small change affects the whole output after eight runs or something. So this means that there is a very slow diffusion. So this is how we actually broke this cipher. Okay, this slow diffusion allowed us to, you know, make some modifications in the input and make it easily trace it runs later. This is how differential cryptanalysis works, by the way. You give a difference, so you make a small change in the input, and you try to find the change in the output after a many runs. So here. Changing this, for instance, this byte does not affect this byte maybe after eight runs. So this allows us to obtain something with probability one. So I'm making a change here and I know that runs later, it doesn't affect this byte. And applying a similar technique from below to the up, you can obtain actually some impossible differentials. And this way you can find very uh, attacks on the very large amount of runs. So this way you actually uh, can break the cipher. So actually it is kind of a broken, but it is still IOS standard. And it looks like it is going to stay there for a long time because they don't update it. I mean, they revise these standards, but they say that, okay, we revised the previous one and everything's still valid. But actually they should have removed it years ago due to those attacks, okay?